I don't even have a wired connection in this place. So I just have like a shitty Wi-Fi adapter plugged into my PC. Mm. Oh yeah, I've been there. That's how I did the podcast for most of the opening years from Florida. Mm. It's good though, because even if I'm tempted to reinstall Destiny, I probably couldn't play it. Oh yeah. So even if I were going to do that, which I'm probably <laughs> not, uh, I would have that safeguard. Desperate cries echo. The scream of anger shakes the earth and you discover that it came from your soul. Oh no. This is episode 317 of Insert Credit, the 41st most popular video game podcast on the internet, but the number one podcast with a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe and I attended zero E3s. Oh, uh, I'm Tim Rogers and I attended uh, uh, too many E3s, a bunch of them. Let's just leave it at this, more than one E3. Yeah, I'm Brandon Sheffield, and I attended every E3 from 1999 until its demise. Uh, not counting the virtual one, I didn't. I didn't. Well, do that's that. not it, real. There, there was like a minor physical component, so technically it was something you could have sort of attended, but uh, I don't think it counts. So, uh, yeah. This week we are joined by author of the new coffee table book out this January 2024, Land Party. Uh, Merritt K is back on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I've been to one E3 and it was the last one. And I think I called it like when I was there because it was already falling apart even before COVID. There was this huge blank stretch of blue carpet where Sony was supposed to be and they weren't. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it was pretty depressing. I was, I spent, you know, as a kid, it was like the dream, right? To go to E3. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got there and it was work and it was like, okay, well the internet exists now. So like, I don't really need to, to do this. And I don't understand why there are teens in Balenciaga here who paid <laughs> to get in, uh, to play <laughs> Borderlands three, a they couple months a before lot, it came out. A lot to get they paid in. a lot of money to get they in. They paid a lot. I'm going to, okay. It's actually, it's worse than that. There are kids in Balenciaga who paid Balenciaga prices to play Fortnite, <laughs> uh, which is, was all <laughs> free game. out <laughs> for, to play a free game. In a public venue surrounded by aesthetic repugnance is basic. It was a nightmare, but I will say I do have one good memory, which is uh, we we went to the Nintendo. I mean, booth doesn't seem accurate. It was like a, an exhibit. It was a whole thing. And um, the Nintendo experience. The Nintendo experience, TM. Uh, I saw Bill Trennan walking down a staircase. So it was a multi-floor uh, affair. And uh, we made eye contact across the floor for just one second. And he gave me a wistful smile. <laughs> And, uh, I, I had a different experience at the Nintendo experience, which is <laughs> I got, I'm going to say this, uh, I, I've kept this secret since the final oh, wow. E3. I, I had a, a really weird, strange, in-person experience with Charles Martinet. No. Who was very <laughs> weird and violent and rude to me <laughs> for about three seconds. Violent? Like, uh, we had our camera and Charles Martinet was walking by. And I was like, it's Charles Martinet. Come on by. And he comes over and goes, oh, wow, ooh, ooh, it's me. Ooh, it's Mario. And it was very, very, very <laughs> disturbing. No, I'm just kidding. He said, he did this, a oh, wahoo, it's a me, it's a me, Mario. And I was like, yeah, all right. So what have, how's everything been going lately at Nintendo? And he goes, he goes, no, we're not doing, no, that's all you get. And he wow. walks away. Wow. And it was he was like, no, we're not doing that. That's all you get. And he walked away. And I was like, wait, what? Hollywood's changed you, man. What was that? Like, was that a, a joke? But it wasn't in a Wario no. voice. It was <laughs> just be- in like a normal guy voice. I'm like, how you been doing? No, we're not doing that. That's all you get. And he's <laughs> no, just it, walking it, away. It was a snap. That fits in with what I saw him do at that E3. What, what, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was doing photos with people. At, at that E3, that 2019. Yeah, I mean, I had a camera guy and a microphone. Okay, no, no, no but this, but, but he's, he was doing photos, right? Just photos. Uh, and someone was like, oh, can I take a video of you doing that? And he changed his voice immediately to like his normal speaking voice and was like, no video, only photos. <laughs> so like, wow. I don't know, maybe it's some kind of thing in his contract. Or maybe he doesn't want you to steal his soul. He jumped in on video and grabbed the Kotaku microphone. <laughs> like, he, he like jumped into the camera and goes, wahoo, ooh. 
And I'm like, all right, we got him. This is good. And then not one second in, he turned. And then hours later, E3 ended forever. (laughs) That's the kind of initiative that makes you the Mario ambassador. Yeah, I guess. No, again, I don't want to sound mean, but uh, that was 100% uh, uh, NCB, nose candy behavior, dude. Like, it was 100%. (laughs) Like... I've known some god darn people with a bit of a sweet nose. Really? For the nose candy. I've known some. This you kidding? Me. You you kidding? You you know me. I've been around places, okay? Yeah. I I I know it when I see it. You think uh you think yeah, he got he went Hollywood and he's a big shot now. He's just I mean, uh, I think I think going to the bathroom been, to adjust his contacts all the time and <laughs> I mean, I think he's been doing uh He's been doing, he think he's been, uh, I think that's been the thing for the whole time, I think since So you're probably alleging mo- on this podcast, which is the 41st most popular video game podcast, uh, that beloved, Currently. beloved uh, Mario actor, ex-Mario actor, Charles Bartonette uses illegal drugs. I'm saying I'd be surprised if he was if he didn't. Yeah. Okay. And also, this is only the 41st most popular video game podcast uh, uh, <laughs> because I don't have my own <laughs> video game podcast. Which at which <laughs> point it would be this it, would, it, would, it would probably be you know, I'd say 10 places above this. Let's yeah. uh, place your bets, everybody. How high <laughs> Thanks, would it would it chart? How wow, high would so it? So you're chart? saying that your co-hosts are dragging you down? I mean, no. A lot of no, stuff's coming out. No, um, I'm saying that. Uh, I'm saying that you have no idea what this podcast would be if it if uh, it would be horrible. People like bad stuff, first of all. That's have true. you seen what's number one? First of all, it's a <laughs> podcast that can't even commit to being humorous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, that is, I, I've got to say, can I just say this? We're, you know what? We're here on the, this is the answer credit show, right? Sure is. I, I'm saying this right now. I'm going to war. <laughs> kind of funny. That wow. is some of the worst branding I have ever encountered in my disgusting life. Uh, <laughs> it's just awful. The logo is awful. The name is terrible. That is the stupidest god darn thing. Yes. Make a god darn statement or god darn don't. Wow. Pinch the loaf or exit the pot. Lord. That's fire. Like, come on. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Yeah, we made a staunch decision to not be funny when we started this podcast, and we are sticking to Couldn't it. Couldn't brand their way out of a god darn underwater paper bag. Like, Lord. All right. It, it honestly makes me a little sick. <laughs> we are uh, 10 All places right. up in, in trending. So, oh, that doesn't mean anything. Oh, oh, T rending. I don't yeah, like T-rending. that stuff. I don't. I don't worry about training. Have you noticed that Netflix has a for you a recommended, a popular, and a trending category when you yeah. log in? Yeah, uh, it makes me want to god darn throw up. <laughs> My recommended on Netflix is all One Piece movies because I've only oh. been watching One Piece. Uh, I have a question for you guys. Uh, wait, before you start that, yeah. I'm just going to point out. Quite often, um, when someone wins this show, yeah. They get asked to ask a question. That's true. Uh-huh. And uh, usually, when it's one of us, we've forgotten. That's correct. Uh, I've been standing by for you to ask me when I was going to do my question from when I won the episode like four, five, six episodes ago. Oh, I was so surprised that you won that episode that I forgot you got that win. So <laughs> right. why don't you go ahead and deploy that question you've got in the tank? Okay, it's not very good. <laughs> so. Then I'm glad you stopped the show for it. Wait, 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 wait. It's not very good. Would I be surprised? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lord. No, it's a, it's it's one that I think uh, in particular Tim probably won't like very much. Oh, right, let's hear it. It is... Oh, I can't wait for this. <laughs> I got other stuff to do over here. <laughs> I enjoy hearing hearing about the emergent behaviors that happen in the video games, the things that weren't necessarily narratively designed that occur in games. And so mm-hmm. I'm asking you all to share with me some of your uh, recent, most interesting, either ones that you've played or that you've heard of, emergent situations in games. Like, for example, when I was playing that Weird West game and there was a big buildup to how this this bounty I was going after was really, really tough, really well defended, had all these guys, and I was actually a little nervous about it because I had to, I had died and lost a lot of progress somewhat recently. But I got on the roof of where this guy was, 
and was just kind of uh, messing around looking at stuff. And then I just hear all these screams and and uh, and shooting and stuff. And it turns out I had gotten on top of that guy's building and one of them had had shot or like had knocked over a uh, a lamp and mm-hmm. set they set all each other on fire and started shooting at each other. And I just came downstairs and collected all the loot. It was ridiculous. Anyway, anybody got any fun ones? On that, wait. What game was this you were talking about having been played? That that was uh that was Weird West. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. But you know, there's a in your cyberpunks, in your GTAs, yeah, in your Baldur's Gate threes. Sometimes you get some some biz that's going on that's interesting. I've got an old one. Go for it. Ooh. And stop me if I've told the story on this podcast before. <laughs> uh, it's a Morrowind thing. I think that's new. I don't believe you've told us. Okay, so in Morrowind, which, you know, it's an Elder Scrolls game, so famously pretty buggy, it had this thing where when you sold a shopkeeper or something, if it was better quality than what they had on, they would put it on. So, like, in Morrowind, there's, like, clothes as well as armor, right? So you, like, wear Mm. clothes under your armor, and you could enchant clothing as well, right? So uh, there was this thing you could do where, like, some of the, the cheapest enchantment spells are the most useless ones, like, poison yourself for one damage every like one minute or whatever but uh you could find like the best quality shirt and enchant it with a spell that poisoned yourself and then (laughs) sell it to a shopkeeper Mm -hmm. they would put it on immediately you wait for like 10 hours and then they're lying dead on the ground (laughs) and you can take all of their stuff and your shirt back and just sort of like take your business elsewhere (laughs) which i always thought was so funny um definitely not intended behavior but much more fun than like a Skyrim, like, oh no, actually like the shopkeepers don't have, their stuff doesn't exist in the world because you could just steal it. Like, come on. Yeah. Eat my shorts, eat my shirt, my cursed poison shirt. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And and I also enjoy the specific scenarios when like, this is the kind of stuff that Tim doesn't like as far as I understand. Oh, you're going to just start. Yeah, okay. Wait. So first of all, I, I need to point out before you continue here is that this, I, it, it's just really weird to, uh. It's just in case anyone needs any further reminder that uh, uh, I don't, me and Brandon don't have any conversations outside of this podcast. Why would this question bother me? Number one, <laughs> because like uh, number two, it's because he's going to start talking about glitches. Is that it? I was about. First to. of all, there's plenty of emergent stuff in games that's not glitches. It's that true. is actually fun to talk about that we could I talk agree. about. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the glitches. Then let's hear it. What do you got? I got something that happened to me. No, wait, Brandon said he just had one. Okay. Oh, no, it's, 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 it's not interesting. Go ahead, Jeffy. Let's hear it! Uh, come on, Brent. All right. It wasn't a, it wasn't a full example is the, is the problem. I was just saying I, like, uh, I certainly enjoy those things where someone's talking and they're like stuck on an elevator and they just get shot out of the cutscene. All right. Oh, that kind of thing. That's yeah. That's that's what uh, the typical uh, AAA game designer means when they when they say emergent, <laughs> the emergent, uh, yeah. emergent yeah. narrative yeah. because they're emerging at it emergency style <laughs> from the elevator. Right? Is that it? That's, that's right. emergent. <laughs> I have one where the joke was upon me, where I was playing Yakuza Kiwami. And Mm -hmm. I was in the casino area where you had to exchange a bunch of your money for casino tokens to play. Uh, Having just played Yakuza 0, I didn't know there wasn't a way to put your tokens back into regular money. Once you had Mm -hmm. the tokens, you just had the tokens or you had to exchange them for prizes. Now, I was fooling around with the roulette wheel for the first time. I didn't know what I was doing. And I accidentally put all my chips on the least likely number to win. And it came up and I won a huge windfall. That's good. And I was like, well, I don't know what to do with all these tokens now. Maybe I'll just exchange them for the most expensive thing on the prize list and go sell those. And when I did, each of them had a sale value of 10 yen each. So <laughs> I just lost all of the money I made. Oh, that's very funny. Bless you. I, I'm one, I mean, okay, so for me, uh, emergent narrative in video games uh, is uh, something that just makes me a little bit sad because most of the time, e- the narratives that even I find the most exciting are really, really, really mundane and stupid and bad and boring. And when you describe them, you just sound like a psycho. Like, 
my example of the, the now I've done seen everything in Red Dead Redemption 2 when my horse's head accidentally knocked a guy off of a porch and uh, immediately like next door to a police station and the cops started just opened fire <laughs> on me <laughs> and I jumped off the horse and like cowboy walked across the street in the mud my guy just mud walking and I went right outside the red circle and turned around and the cops are just standing in the middle of the street staring at me and then the red circle goes away and I just walked back up to the cops and they're just kind of standing there in the middle of the street and I'm like in my head as this happens uh I'm recalling my my youth enjoying uh, dime westerns and my my adulthood enjoying uh rereading the cowboy stories of Elmore Leonard uh, and I'm just like trying to write an Elmore Leonard uh, a short story paragraph in my head describing what happened, and I'm just uh, I'm just cackling internally as I try to uh, try to do that. So that's uh, that's emergent narrative to me. And that's is, uh, oh oh okay. <laughs> do we have anything we want to say about the new E3, the Game Awards that just happened? Oh, because are, are we talking about the old E3 and the new E3 colliding? Uh, yeah. in one spectacle. That's correct. Um, did anybody watch those Game Awards? Who watched them? I watched it. I saw one thing from I it, and you thing. can probably guess what it was. Oh, what was it? What was the one thing you saw, Jeffy? Sega's back, baby. Oh, yeah. They're back with five new games. Five new games. And they're probably going to be okay, right? Yeah. I know there were a lot of people really upset on social media that the new Jet Set Radio doesn't look exactly like that recently released unsanctioned fan fiction of Jet Set Radio Future, which was interesting. I, I, I wondered, did they get Hideki, Hideki Naganuma back for that Jet Set Radio? I hope not. Because they kind of have to. Yeah. Uh, if they don't, that would be weirder than if they did, right? True. It's a 51-49 mm. situation. But uh, yeah, I, I, I watched the whole Game Awards. Uh, if you if you go to my Twitch channel, you can watch my... my uh, uh, I, I did a uh, the day after because I had to go to a wedding during the Game Awards, um, which was literally during the Game Awards. Not only that, a, a wedding attended by many games industry people, which made it doubly funny that like <laughs> nobody I talked to even seemed to know the Game Awards were happening, which was, in case you were wondering where the uh, where the finger is relative to the pulse mm -hmm. right now. Uh, I, I watched the Game Awards. Uh, it took me six hours because I kept pausing and making fun of Jeff Keighley's suit. <laughs> he looked like a he looked like a stretched little boy. He had like a shawl <laughs> lapel on his. Uh, it's uh -huh. like it. It's like its first communion. Uh, but he has to go to like his cousin's wedding afterward. <laughs> it, it was giving me more of a rented tuxedo kind of vibe. I don't know where you'd rent a tuxedo like that, uh, to be honest. Uh, I'm not really sure. Is he still doing the sneakers suit thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he, his shoes were a little better this year than, than okay. previously. It was, uh, I, I said this on my, on my stream and I stand by it. It was the best suit. Uh, that he had ever worn to one of these events, but that god darn ain't god darn saying basically <laughs> any more than a, a, a little bit less than nothing, because uh, it was it was still pretty bad. But you know, uh, I watched the whole thing because, as I put it, it's like doing your taxes. It's mm. it's gamer taxes, right? Yeah, you got to pay the fun tax. It's basically gamer taxes. Street Fighter Turbo Tax. I only saw one still from the whole thing. I did not tune in to Jeff's big show this year, but I saw one still uh, of a VTuber and I just, yeah. it looks like, oh, the gaming special child of the year is this sexy baby. Gamer of the year is, is, is a pink haired sexy baby dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I made, cool. I made fun of that VTuber on my stream and oh, was God, immediately do lambasted. Don't do that. You can't. By about 14 people in my chat who informed me She's disabled. Oh, so well, they they I mean, inform me of that, and then I'm and like, you can't make fun of YouTubers. They're like up there with K-pop people at this point. I did. I didn't even make fun of her. I just said, you know what? I'm cool with a lot of the stuff the kids do, but I couldn't. I I can't chill with this. I couldn't watch one of these. People. Even even that. Even saying suggesting that some people might not be interested in them. I was drawing a line personally, not. Sure provisionally not legally i wasn't drawing lines for others i was drawing a line for myself saying i don't think i can chill with vtubers i can't watch vtubers uh, it's just not something i find it very unsettling yeah especially like the ultra ultra hyper infantilized high budget ones 
With huge titties, yeah. It's like a full staff of 3D modelers and people are <laughs> are just are bringing this uh, yeah. this uh, uh, what like like semi perverted baby to life or whatever it is, right? It's like mild, this mildly perverted baby is uh, yeah, is being yeah. brought to mildly, life by I think a large, is putting it generously <laughs> by a large. Like as far as perverted of- babies go, they're pretty far <laughs> along the scale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, is is this one more than mildly? I, I don't know. I don't know. And, I feel like the baseline is so out of whack at this point. <laughs> like, right. I, yeah, it's like it's it's not really something we should have to uh, think about at all, much less this much, <laughs> right? Yeah. So my uh, feelings on the show. We want to talk about these awards. Is that yeah, what we want to so do? I feel like uh, it's uh, it shouldn't be an awards show. Probably no. It's, the game commercials we've been calling it for years. Yeah, yeah. Because it it is the game commercials, and I, it's so clear that the awards get in the way of what the show wants to be. Oh yeah. Uh, and and it's obvious everyone's talked about how they they rush through mm-hmm. all the all the actual awards, and and in fact, uh, uh, my partner here in in the home was was walking by. And and while Jeff Keighley was speed running through some awards, and she was like, "These are the awards." This yeah, the awards yeah, watching. the awards. <laughs> when he did like six in a row, there's like a total of like fourteen awards. Yeah, and then there's like one part where he just blazed through six of them, and yeah. it's like, and the, and the winner is this, and it's like they started playing the uh, the playing him off music like dirt <laughs> while he was. They were like, "Oh, that's like time. The, Please wrap it up." The, the orchestra was just. <laughs> Nice. swelling as he talked through these like just rattling out these six awards i was like my god they don't even have the patience uh i don't know it's it's a thoroughly thoroughly jacked up affair at this point yeah. i would not hesitate to say it is once again an obvious observation but when when you're when you're playing the the please wrap it up music while while the the head of Larry and Studios is trying Accepting to dedicate game of the year the game to uh to his recently deceased coworker uh wow. I think it's clear that you don't want to have awards in this Yikes. and so and you know if, if it if it's the Jeff and Kojima hour and it's just Jeff and 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 Kojima being like we are friends right yes we're friends I will make a movie it will be well a game. okay to to be fair the uh, the Jordan Peele thing was actually uh, I was like uh, 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 Jordan Peele's like such a dude and it was just like oh this guy's so real he's like the real it it was important to have a real guy up there speaking English uh, to just kind of <laughs> demonstrate to you exactly man. what yeah it's like he was such a real normal guy who like was genuinely and it's like man. I saw too many people that I thought were cool and smart be like, it's just Jordan Peele just complimenting Kojima. That's so bad. And it's like, okay, he's being really genuine about it. And it's it's nice to see somebody be genuine about it. It, it was quite long for the amount of content. It did though. not even feel like marketing, which is, that's how low the bar is today. Mm. It's a really low bar is if it, if your marketing doesn't feel like marketing, uh, then it passes my test. Which is, you know, I'm I'm very gracious with my metrics these days. I did think it was very silly though how uh, they were like, uh, I watched movies when I was younger, and now I make games. And he played video games when he was younger, and now he makes movies. So it will be a good collaboration. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't say it would be a good collaboration. He said maybe it would be interesting. No, he didn't. And that the translator was definitely like uh, he wasn't ready for prime time. Um, yeah, I mean that guy's. He's always been his translator. That guy's cool. Uh, he's right. been his translator for the past couple of years. We gave it a shot. We got some more news to talk about. Oh, who Let's cares? Let's go. All right. What does it mean that Epic won its court case against Google? I don't know. Are video games different now? Uh, these, uh, you know, the, the, the one percenters, uh, they certainly seem to think so. I basically treat social media like, a like, a, like a Rolodex and I'm a guy who doesn't own a phone because I whip it open and I scroll through and then I close it cause I don't have any business on there. And, uh, all the, the all of the tweets I encountered about this, uh, this lawsuit are from people who are like cheerleading it for reasons that I do not immediately understand, even given my own personal history, knowing that particular person. So in other words, I don't know. It's uh, I didn't look into it because me no interest. And <laughs> yeah. uh, it's uh, maybe I should be interest in this. I don't know, though. So 
Brandon, you're a guy with a video game company. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Honestly, <laughs> it's uh, uh, I think it might mean something in a couple years. There's still going to be challenges to the verdict. You know, it's not. Uh, we'll just see. W- one, I think the the biggest thing I've taken away from it, which is uh, not even specific, not even about it at all, is that I don't pay for the types of outlets that have reported on it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah. I have only seen the headline and the first paragraph of like the first five links I, I clicked on. And, uh, you know, that's not good. <laughs> it's not good that I'm that way, but that's, that's what's happened. I don't know. It's it, like they lost against Apple. They won against Google. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> like yeah. so, so much of what Epic has been doing in the last few years, for example, I guess this is the biggest takeaway I have, is uh, like buying Bandcamp, they did so that they could prove that they were like multimedia and and doing a variety of things. Like so many of the moves that they have taken recently have been to prove that they're different from from Apple and Google and doing stuff the right way. And then, of course, they sold Bandcamp to some venture capital vulture type marketing people and yeah. n- now Bandcamp's getting turned into dust or whatever uh so i i'm i'm not really in favor of anything that has occurred as a result of this so far but hopefully something cool will happen it from it but it's more likely we're going to get like a like the eu pass that thing about data privacy which ultimately just means now you have to click some things before you can look at a website but it doesn't act but they, it still tracks you so you know it's probably gonna be something like that yeah i've yeah. noticed that in some of these apps you can opt out of being tracked but only if you live in california right <laughs> yeah everybody's moving to california yeah <laughs> Uh, you know, heck of an engine though. If you like playing a uh, mid-tier Japanese role-playing game, so uh, which is yeah. which I do, it's a <laughs> heck of an engine they make over there, and it's only going to get even more of a heck in the next couple of years. An interesting little side thing on that that um also comes with the all the Unity nonsense that has gone on is Epic and Unity both made very different choices about how to how they present look bad. their engine. Yeah. Yeah. Where Unity, if you don't pay, they require you to show their logo. Uh, Unreal doesn't let you show their logo unless th- you're in like a big time, big boy partnership with them. Yeah, it's very nice. And so it gives the perception that mm-hmm. all Unity games look like crap because all the cheapest games are forced to display the Unity logo and that you, Unreal games all look great because all the 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 big time Unreal games show the logo. And so you they they really yeah. they really done got themselves with those plans there. Uh Unity I've did. been holding that particular observation in my pocket for quite some time and uh uh, you, that's the kind of thing you don't want to speak out loud on a podcast. It's like doing consulting work for them for free. Don't help them out, Brandon. Well, they, they have they have don't. actually since changed it. So uh, so the the window has passed. Um, they're, so they're changing Reese's that Pieces ET scenario where they can't figure out if they're supposed to be paying for it to be in yeah, the movie yeah. or uh, getting paid for it to be. God, in the movie. I just th- this is again a total derail. But um, I just found out recently. Someone was saying that they didn't want, they're glad they didn't work at a movie theater anymore so they wouldn't hear someone say PCs. And I was like, why would someone, why would someone say PCs? Like it says Reese's right at the front and it's clearly supposed to rhyme and the word is PCs. Because people think it's Reese's. And then they replied that people say Reese's PCs, which I, I I guess that's a real, I just found out about that. And then I saw it, like as soon as I found out about it, I saw it like five times on TV, uh, Mm. people saying Reese's PCs. God, yeah. how do you how do you get? When there? I was a kid, you... I used to get really upset when people would say Pokemon. Oh yeah, oh, that yeah. always, I, you know, even like official like material before they standardized everything would be like new Pokemon, whatever. And I was like, that's not... who's that Pokemon? They didn't, they never Shut said that. The but fuck up. Like, have you not <laughs> seen the word? It's not hard to get. But I really do not like the the current accepted Pokemon where where you do a U Pokemon. in the middle. Yeah, Pokemon. that's okay. It's upsetting to me. I don't like how it sounds. I'm going to tell you what bothers me. This is elite level here. This is elite. Is uh, when Capcom was first trying to really get Monster Hunter to be popular in America, they they didn't clamp down on people saying Mohun instead of Monhun. 
And <laughs> that made me that made me go completely Mohan? insane. Mohan. It made me go Jesus. completely oh, insane. Bad. There were people tweeting about checking out Mohan. And it was like, it's Mon Hun, you morons. Mon Hun. Digimon. Okay, Mon. <laughs> That's what they've been calling it in Japan since like 2007. And Mon is the accepted shortening of monster. Why would you take two letters from one word and three from the next? It's not Mo Hue. And it's like, it's weird because it's like Capcom could have like, broadcasted the hashtag Mon Hun, but some branding scientist expert, first of all, Capcom has like the worst English fonts like in the game, right? Oh my God, so it's it, So it's like, it's like I don't terrible. trust them to have a single branding expert on staff over there. No offense, Capcom, if you're listening, uh, thanks for the video games. Mega Man sucks. Uh, love that Resident <laughs> Evil. Uh, love that Street Fighter. But uh, like they, they could have just celebrated with the, the word Monhun. They could have t- given it to people. But instead, they let a, a scant few influencers tweet hashtag Mohun for like a year and they never did anything about it. And I just remember sitting there feeling like I was spiraling into madness. And I think it's been corrected now. I'm not sure. If they don't put Mohan in the new Monster Hunter game, I'll be so upset. <laughs> oh, okay. I just looked up Monhun. I want to be able to fight Mohan. The hashtag yeah. Monhun does have some, it has some English results. All right. Nature is healing. Yeah, not not healed enough though, because Monster Hunter should be should be bigger than it is. How would opinion. you design Mutant League Golf? Uh, uh I would start. Uh, this is this is like I'm glad you asked. I would start by not caring. <laughs> 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 Boom. Um, I think so. For Mutant League Golf, there was a recent Mario Golf where you had to like in the, in the online you like had to walk. The course after hitting yeah, the ball, yeah, like a race kind of. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I feel like you know, there's there's a lot of video games like Trombone Champ that are just meant to look stupid and gifs, yeah. so that you get interested mm-hmm. in it, and then you realize, oh, there's depth here. There's an interesting game here. Uh, whenever Nintendo tries to manufacture that sort of social engagement, it always comes across as ham handed, in my opinion. So mm-hmm. I kind of feel like that whole uh, uh, race to the holes or whatever, like it was supposed to look stupid in a way that you're supposed to have fun with, but there's no latitude for actually injecting fun into that experience. And it just ended up being kind of lame. I think, anyway, you're going to make Mutant League Golf. There should be movement between, you know, you hit the ball and then you got to move, right? Yeah. And you're you're playing at the same time as other players. But instead of being some ultra fast, like goofy looking Nintendo, it should, it should be meaningful where you can like kill the other golfers. Mm. You can get into like gun fights. You got to have a zombie who mm-hmm. uh, uses their own leg as as the as the club. Oh, very good. I think that's the key to to making Or this. a skeleton. So they're balancing on the other leg while they're doing balancing it? on the other leg, yeah. Um okay. they they it's a zombie with really good balance. Is a skeleton or a zombie a mutant though? Not really. You know, no, I, unless it's in Fallout. In my assessment of of uh, mutant league football for example, those weren't all really mutants either. Um the, it's it's just like a catch-all term for I see, I see. Weird and gross creature. I would, I would say non-human free. Yeah, I, I yeah. think it's mutant league football because the commissioners are mutants. Oh, they ah. of the the league is of them. Yeah, ah. I do believe a uh, mutant league football is also just kind of a name. Yeah, and yeah. I think it just means weird football. I just call it weird football. How I mean, about weird it? football for my heart and for my hand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, why don't they understand my intentions? Because you throw it. <laughs> I, if I were to make a golf game of any kind, I would basically copy Ribbit King and uh, and make it multiplayer, where you got your bounces, you got your your little things that cause the ball to move around and do some other stuff, so that you got sort of a Rube Goldberg machine of scenarios as you try to get to this hole that's very far away or in an obscure place or in a cave and you have to get the ball to to move around to get into it um and then just have multiple people doing it and it's and it's chaos add a little uh croquet in there so you can knock each other's balls away some of that kind of business is what i would probably go for pretty good uh, why mm-hmm. don't we take a break and we'll be right back after you hear <laughs> this jingle oh, there's, ding there's a jingle there's a little jingle. I remembered another little emergent thing. It's a very mild one, 
But uh, sometimes the subtlest things are the most amusing to me anyway. It was in Yakuza 0. Like you can you can carry things around when you're you're mm-hmm. in the dungeon kind of places like when you're you're having to go through the Millennium Tower or whatever. And I always carry something with me in case I need to hit a big guy. And I was carrying this uh, giant potted plant that is as tall as Kiryu. Mm-hmm. And I carried it into a cutscene. And then he drops it. He just thonks it next to himself because he's not <laughs> supposed to be carrying anything. And so then there's a dramatic cutscene where, uh, you know, they're doing these camera angles and stuff. And there's just this big, big foliage right next to Kiryu's face while he's talking. And uh, and he's like, no, I can't do that. And he's <laughs> like half obscured by a tree. I love that stuff. It's subtle, but I like it. The true insert credit starts here. Welcome back to the show. Uh, It's time for us to go to the dirt bag. This is the part of the show. It's actually today. It's called Carl's dirt bag today. For some time for us to go to Carl's dirt bag. We don't Uh, know who that is uh, yet. We'll find out soon. (laughs) Today's Carl is Dice Game Uchiha, uh, who gave us a few dollars a month so that he could get the chance for us to read one of the questions he submitted to this show. That's something you get. Uh, He asks, what are the most Uh uh-oh, and most yeah moments in licensed video game soundtrack history. Licensed Uh, video game soundtrack history. Oh, well, I mean, uh, Dragula in Jet Set Radio Future is the alt, it's like the alpha of the uh uh-ohs, I think. Uh, but it's also the the Omega of the yes. So (laughs) it's did did any of y'all play Jet Set Radio right when it came out? No. Yeah. I only had the demo. So I only played like the first two stages. Brandy, you probably played, I played a boot. You, you, did you play the, or I played the original Japanese one uh, until its wheels fell off. And then I played uh, the, uh, in, uh, the American one. Uh, Lowell uh, also downloaded from IRC and yeah. just played on a, on a, on a CDR and hearing the Dragula was just very funny to me. So I, I've, I've got one, which is, I've, I've heard a lot of people say that they appreciated the music in Crazy Taxi and that Crazy Taxi introduced them to punk music. That's, that's, uh, or rather, uh, <sighs> Offspring introduced them to punk, punk music. And I think that's, that's fair for some people, but not everyone can have the Offspring personally come to their house and hand them like an exploited CD or a no effects CD, mm-hmm. which I assume is how Offspring introduced them to punk music. <laughs> But, uh, wow, wow, wow. Blasted. It's the 30th anniversary of Smash, and you're talking smack on Offspring. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's right. I gotta say, uh, uh, I gotta say, Offspring sucks, dude. It's true. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. Dude. So wow. that's an uh-oh for me. I've got to say, uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm actually going out. This is the official opinion of this podcast. Yeah. Not a single good song. Not a single uh good anything resembling wow. anything good. There's nothing nothing redeemable. You know what I have to say to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nice. Wow. Wow. Offspring and Bowling astonished. for Soup are the same band, right? Wow. Okay. I I'm going to I'm going to go, I think. No. <laughs> They're the same as bowling for soup? Yeah, yeah I mean, more or less. Huh? Uh, the, smash. <laughs> Saying the f- word yeah five times in a row and not getting it right once. Oh, Can God. you imagine that? <laughs> it's just sounding like the ultimate, like you just god darn uh, snorted a pine cone. Uh, the guy's got like the worst voice. That, it's like an awful voice that guy has. Awful. Dexter Holland. Yeah, is he dead? No. <laughs> or is it just the Smash Mouth He's guy? He's like a, a Man, major researcher. Why'd the, why'd the Smash Mouth guy have to die before the offspring guy? There's no justice in the yeah. world. Yeah, there's no, there's either no justice or not enough god darn snipers. Have you seen, <laughs> uh, there's like commercials. Uh, I, I keep seeing these during football, like to join like the United uh, United Airlines Pilot Academy. They're trying to get more pilots. Yeah. Kids don't want to be pilots. It's a rare breed of human who can become a pilot. You need to have a certain amount of eyesight. Mm. And they're not becoming pilots. You know why? Because they're becoming VTubers. Oh, yeah. Cause right. It's, I, I, I don't understand how that Virtual connects, pilots. but they want to become VTubers. This is your captain, sexy baby. The kids want to be VTubers. Yeah, they don't want to be pilots. Yeah. You know, That's the number one most common answer to the question. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a VTuber. I want to be yeah. a VTuber. Is it VTuber now? Is that is that 
Has VTuber replaced a YouTuber? Have you seen <laughs> Tesla and SpaceX are like nobody nobody wants we found that the 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 quality of applicants has really declined in the last couple of years. And it's like, yeah, nobody wants to work for you. Right. Because yeah. you suck. But another uh, here's here's a good moment in soundtracks, but uh, I think this counts is um Cold What's It who did the um the wipeout soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Cause uh that that is just holistically entered into that game's sphere like the music and the graphic design and everything all wait wipeout is the game that has uh the the soundtrack is just uh uh jeremy's song from season one of peep show on repeat isn't that the is that the game series <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is outrageous, this is outrageous. <laughs> this is this is outrageous. outrageous. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, the Wipeout soundtrack. It's just it's the one composed <laughs> by... Uh, <laughs> is that the game? Dick Dale. Sure. Dick Dale. Is that, is that the game I'm thinking about? Oh, my God. Uh, mate, it's always like the same like dude who like likes the Wipeout music. The, the Cold dude storage. Always, a guy wearing like a really tight t-shirt. That's all I That's all I really know. It's, this is always a tight t-shirt. Like a tight v-neck with the sleeves that are too short. That's the kind of guy who likes Wipeout. Uh, but anyway... To further answer the question, I I, I just want to say that the first time I booted up Crazy Taxi, a game I was predisposed to like, Mm -hmm. okay, it being Sega, it being Dreamcast, um, I'd never seen it in the arcade before then because I was in college, uni, as they might say in England. I did not know. Now, envy this, if you will. Just envy for a moment, if you may, this departed personage that I occupied uh, several decades ago. Envy, if you must. The fact that I did not know The Offspring did the music for the game. I did not know the soundtrack of The Offspring. I, I didn't know that till I booted it up either. Yeah, I didn't know it. I did not know it. And the first thing I heard when I'm like, yeah, this is cool. I like Sega. And I boot into it and it's... <laughs> and I was just like, what? It's one of my like t- bottom three bands that I've ever heard is providing the music here. It's like I knew who The Offspring was. From outside Crazy Taxi, there are youths probably who only know, who who learned of the offspring from Crazy Taxi. Yes, I heard this many times from people. Uh, as a positive example, uh, one that just occurred to me, is uh, in one of the later Saints Row games, uh, there's this sequence where you and whoever you're with in the car will sing along very badly to whatever song is on the oh, radio. Oh, yeah. I don't like it's that. It's a really charming moment. I don't it's, like uh, that. It's just a friend. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, uh, I, I heard it's a Sublime's uh, Lovin is what I got. Oh, maybe there's multiple. Yeah. yeah. that's a, Anyway, I lived in a college dorm in the late 1990s is what I'm saying here. Um, so I'd already heard all of The Offspring. I'd also heard all of mm. Everclear. And I'm going to say you put a gun to my head, tell me to flip a coin uh, or whatever. Uh, I would have rather had an Everclear soundtrack for A Crazy Taxi, <laughs> 100%. It's bold words. Really? Can you imagine? It's a tough one. Yeah, but I can I can I can understand that uh, Crazy Taxi's developers wanted a high energy sound, and it it was probably like like a song like this, and then they just went with it. And I'm gonna say, uh, and I don't know how many street cred points I'm gonna blow out the back of my uh, automobile when I say this, but uh, it's always tainted Crazy Taxi for me. It's kind of always made me feel like like think slightly less. Yeah. A crazy taxi. <laughs> Me too. It's been it's hard to play it because I don't want to hear that music. I I grew up in the Bay Area and Offspring is from San Diego and uh, California. Mm-hmm. We play a lot of California bands. So I had heard them since I was like 12, since yeah. middle school and then I get to college and then people are like, "Oh, have you heard this music in Crazy Taxi?" Pretty fly like, for a white uh, guy. Yeah. I got it got overplayed on the radio. When I was 14. Uh, they could have had semi-charmed life. And why don't you step out from that ledge, my friend, uh, on loop? Um, yeah. Th- yeah what, what's Third Eye Blind? They could have. They There's a lot of other 90s bands they could have gone with for Crazy but Taxi. I do think it probably worked for the game and people liked it and, and all that kind of stuff. But I wish they would have had. I was just immediately reaching for the for the Sega original music option, which felt like they would do that. Like the here here's the one that we made. Yeah. Uh, also in case you want it's, it's all the more galling that they've had such a sterling track record of providing music for driving cars to uh, in previous games that uh the, the crazy taxi was just such such an insane moment. 
uh, in video game history. Well, yeah, it's crazy taxi. It's not. That's a good you point. Know. It's not regular taxi. It's not sensible. Well, not not as far as the Joker's concerned. It's just normal automobile <laughs> to him. But um, like you know, here's here's the sad part, and this is the part that I'm actually preemptively. I need I need these dogs to be quiet because there's a guy in the hall just like there's a guy in the hall just stacking stuff up in front of the elevator. That man. Dexter Holland of the offspring. <laughs> yeah, it is right. Dexter Holland with his hair all messed up. What 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 happened to get his hair like that? He's here to give you a real punk scene. Hit by lightning. But here's what I'm gonna say. This is this is my final word on this because I we've been talking about this long enough. Yeah. And I think the the fans haven't had their fill yet, so we need to finish this. <laughs> There's a new crazy taxi coming out, right? Mm. That again, people on the internet were were hating on its visual look that that we got to see a third of a second of or whatever in that game awards trailer i i think it's fine my only problem is every tweet i've seen about it i've seen maybe a total of about 12 tweets about how they're making a new crazy taxi how sega's planted the flag declared their intent uh, of those 12 tweets like like the five of literally five of them were someone saying there better be an offspring dude ha yeah. ha and it's always sarcastic but some god darn just blank faced marketing quote unquote expert oh yeah at sega is gonna go we must call the dexter holland <laughs> hey siri get me the telephone number of dexter holland why does siri talk like siri <laughs> well no this is a guy why, talking why to does siri, this guy like, talk siri. like siri like <laughs> it's easier for robots to understand you if you oh, talk like robots that makes sense actually yeah for i i, I witnessed a friend learn that once and uh it was really disturbing what happened after that. You ever, you ever hear Siri try to understand Matthew Kumar? It's very funny. Oh, that is funny. They, they cannot understand the Scottish accent. I don't know. I've, I've talked to Siri in Chinese and it works. Uh, but I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. I that's guess not no Scottish accent. That's that's the trouble. I, I don't want to. I don't. I, don't I think they fixed it up since then. It was uh, just. It was early days. I, I don't want to ad- advertise Siri too much here, but uh, it's gotten weirdly. Uh, I use my little Apple TV remote to to launch stuff all the time, and I just I don't you know, you just read something, and it just immediately. I've tried to confuse it uh, all the time, and it it does not get confused anymore, which is really. It's weird. funny because I watch these uh, anime about you know someone mistreating an android or whatever, and I think to myself, I would not be like that. I would treat a humanoid robot like a mm. humanoid, but uh, yeah. but I refuse to talk to my phone or to my Roku or to I, I will I will not do it. So like, yeah. am I a robot racist? I don't know. It doesn't look like a person. So, you know. It's true. Give it a face. Okay, so wait, what's what's a really good example of licensed music in a video game? Hmm. I almost want to say the final song in Death Stranding by Churches, but that was a song made for the game. So that doesn't even count. I mean, Metal Gear Solid 5, I don't know. That was good. I like that. Space Shell 5? No, Me- Metal Gear Solid 5. Oh, Metal Gear Solid 5. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I liked flying into... Uh, to uh, Spando Ballet. That was good. Oh, oh, man. Frank Sinatra. Stranger of Paradise, dude. Sure. My way, bro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's like literally they, they've got a, a Frankie song in a god darn Frankie fantasy. Final Fantasy has a Frank Sinatra song. Doesn't really get too much more fist pumpage than that, does it? <laughs> yeah. it was. I thought it was very funny, so I like that. Do covers of licensed songs count? Oh. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. No, it has to yeah. be a licensed song. Yeah. I it has so. to be the song, right? It's probably something in rock band. Yeah, yeah why not? Yeah, I guess. Why not? The end. Dragon Force and Guitar Hero, <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a moment in Brutal Legend where where Dragon Force drops and it's like, oh boy, here we go. You know what? Dragon Force is actually pretty good. Uh, <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, I got I yeah. got into an argument with Tim Schafer about- Is it pronounced uh, Schaefer or Sachafer? I think it's Sachaffer, uh about about what metal is, because <laughs> yeah. he said that all genres were represented, and I was like, nope. Anyway, all right. Stupid. What is metal going. though? That's the next question. So when I was growing up, I did not know anybody else who was into video games. So I would like you to tell me about your personal experiences with LAN parties. Oh, well, I'll say right off the bat, I never went to a LAN party. I mostly heard about them. I heard yeah. about them from like Vincent Diamante went to some and I heard about it from him. And like, I guess probably actually because of that, I perceived it as an East Coast thing. <laughs> That's probably not real. <laughs> I went to college with these two. Uh, there were these two Poindexters on my dorm floor. Neither of them actually uh, surnamed Poindexter. That would be too easy. And uh, they had uh, computers that were connected together so they could play Doom. Deathmatch 
And Ooh. I guess they kind of had a LAN party going at all times in their uh, in their uh, dorm room, if that counts, which I don't think it does. I don't. I wouldn't say that it counts, but uh, they had it going. Merritt, what drove you to make a book about land parties? Is that something that's in your personal history? Uh, I mean, kind of, although I was never allowed to bring our family computer anywhere. So like when my friends would- You, you mean know, the Famicom? Famicom? It was so small, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. But my, my, right. my, my mom was like, you Thank know, you. I, I want to play, uh, what's his name's comedy joke video game. Uh, what's that comedian and actor? Red Skelton. No, Japanese. Oh, uh, Takeshi Kitano? Yeah, yeah, his his whole joke Beats game where you Takashi. have to sing karaoke and Takashi's challenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, the, that that Japanese comedian who's also just like one of the best film directors. Yeah, also in that. Japanese history. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. Let's go ahead and just call him a comedian then. I mean, I'm, he I'm, I'm, has I'm done a lot of comedy. He does do a lot of comedy these days. That's true, but uh, you can you can choose what you look at with a guy. Man, that guy got so old. Have you seen how old that guy got? I watched the new the new uh, he's old. Takeshi's Castle. How old is he? He's uh, re- he's he's real old. He's he's, he's he's getting like Eastwood old. Yeah. Ooh, he, he, wow. He's he's like wa- walking walking a dinosaur for a pet kind of old. He's he's really starting to droop. Okay. But you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I don't know. I, I'm kind of amazed that people were allowed to just like take their computers places because my parents would have looked at me like, what are you talking about? That's a completely insane thing to do. Is this why GameCubes had handles on them? Yeah. You know it. Yeah. Plus the like improvised weapon aspect too. Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah, I mean like, you know, my friends sometimes would do them and I would go over there and, you know, we'd play like Tribes or Quake or whatever, or like StarCraft. But I think part of the reason why I wanted to do the book was because I kind of miss that in a weird way of like, I didn't ever really fully experience it, which is a complicated feeling to have about something. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was less the personal thing and more just like, like a really interesting visual phenomenon. Uh, and it's just like a really different way to interact with computers and technology than today. Like all these pictures are like people having a great time with computers, which I feel (laughs) like today is like very uncommon. (laughs) It also took place in a specific era when, when that, like it made sense to bring your computer to a place because the internet wasn't as good. Um, Yeah. And so, so you've got not only the particular vibes of a land party, you also have the clothing people were wearing, the puka shell necklaces, right? The, yeah, the little spiked hairdos, the um, uh-huh. the rise of new metal anime is starting to filter into the U.S. Yeah, and yeah, the tech uh-huh. angle is interesting too. I think just because like yeah, like first person shooters were becoming like the genre of PC games in the mid '90s. Doom clones, yeah. Doom clones, yeah, <laughs> uh, but. Like 3D graphics were getting better, but the network infrastructure just wasn't really there yet in the U.S. at least. Outside of college dorms. Yeah. Outside of college dorms, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was the the only place to get wild and fast internet. Yeah, yeah. Even when I was in college in like the 2000s, we had like an intra-school sh- file sharing network and it was... It was so cool. Yeah. Uh, it was the fastest internet I'd ever had in my life. One of my roommates who um, put his his steak, his bloody steak, on top of my bag of brown rice, which was all the food that I had. Oh, no. And it, and it bled all the blood into my bag of brown rice. Anyway, he played Counter-Strike all the time as North Korean terrorist. That was his handle. Um, <laughs> wow. So, NKT. So there you go. He he was on that LAN connection. It wasn't a LAN party per se, but they would have LAN parties in it's like a team their one section connection. of the dorm. Other yeah. people would mm. bring their stuff in there and they so they could ha- all be in the same space to be on a team. So against. my my dorm in like 97, they had a team one connection and uh, yeah. they 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 played Doom like between rooms uh, wildly. So it was I don't know how, you know, what what kind of spaghetti it was to set that up. But I mm-hmm. mean, you know, so while I, I never attended any land parties per se, I, I did live in a college dorm where like four people played Doom. Not really sure how it worked out. But, uh, but like the, one of the weird things now is that when people do that stuff still, because like people do, right, mostly with laptops because it's actually easier now. But so many games like don't actually have the option to have like local network connections. So like a lot of the time if people are playing games on their laptops in the same space, it's like you're connecting to a server and then yeah. coming back, even if you're only playing with people in the same room. 
which is really bizarre. And I think it's part of a bigger trend towards like server side stuff, which obviously has some advantages in ways for games like Destiny, where it would just be impractical to run client side. But like also is like, you know, part of this bigger trend of like having more digital distribution and like companies owning more of their stuff. Uh, even if you've bought it, you don't really own it in the same way yeah. uh, and you don't have as much control over it either. So I think that, I don't know, I think that's why it's interesting to me. And I think it just resonates with people, especially because so many people right now are just like fed up with the what technology and the internet has sort of become in the last few years. So maybe it's just partly just like a return thing, but yeah. The closest modern equivalent to actually doing that technically is people playing the Switch because you can yeah. have the, yeah. the local over-air connection, right. but it's still a local connection. So you can play your yeah. uh, Mario's and Mario Kart. I was thinking about this the other day and like, I feel like there's a whole alternate timeline where ad hoc Wi-Fi like really took off in a big way. Yeah. Like, because do you remember Space Team for the iPhone? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that just completely fell off. And then things like yeah. the DS or like the 3DS with Street Pass, those, that was just like the best. And we just don't have that anymore. Yeah. And part of it, I guess, it's just it never really made sense in Western markets because, or at least in the US, because we don't have the density. Yeah. But it's like that stuff was so cool. That's why people brought it to conventions and stuff. And then it was like, yeah, I'm going right. to do my street pass. And you'd get hundreds of street passes. Yeah. It was the best. And you'd f- see people from all over the, the world be, and you'd be like, oh, I got someone from Denmark or whatever. Right. Right. But yeah, I feel like that there was this other way we could have gone with like local network stuff that is like the ad hoc Wi Fi kind of thing. But for whatever reason, I don't know, people just, we didn't go for it. Could have been cool. Is yeah. it true that LAN Party Inside the Multiplayer Revolution is available for pre order now and will be released on January 30th, 2024? If that's what Amazon says. <laughs> yes, that is you true. Know that, I believe. Uh, available yeah. for pre order now. Well, okay. So yeah, there was a pre, there was like a, a crowdfunding campaign that was basically just a pre-sale and that was last year. And people who did that are getting their books as of now. And uh, yeah, so like there's a retail version that is coming out in January and you can get it on Jeff's big store or I would imagine. And um, yeah, it's uh, I think it's a pretty cool book. I still haven't seen mine. I haven't seen a copy of it yet <laughs> oh boy. for various reasons related to my moving and stuff. But uh, people have seen it and it looks good based on uh, what I've seen of it so far. So uh, yeah, if you're into, you know, old computing stuff, there's also some really great essays from people like Josh Sawyer and uh, Robert Yang. Now, is it also true that people who viewed this item also viewed the Anchor Prime 100 watt USB C charger? Uh, That's a good one. Compact, fast PPS. I would love to see the related <laughs> items on this. I can, I can honestly say that uh, those Anchor high wattage USB C chargers are pretty good. There you go. A book for the discerning customer. Look, I don't want to do free promo for them, but yeah. Anchor stuff, I, I use it. It's fine. Yeah, I actually I recently purchased a U Green brand. Uh, there was like a two hundred dollar multi USB C charger that can charge my MacBook and also like five USB C things at the same time because it allowed me to cut like six pounds of stuff out of my my camera kit bag. So that's how much two hundred dollars is worth if you add up the uh, baggage costs and whatnot. So in other words, I'm I'm off the anchor is what I'm saying. Mm, I'm off the okay. anchor now. It's time for us to do our video game taxes. This is one of my favorite segments we return to every month or so. It's Violence Island. This is the part of the show where we take submissions from forums.insertcredit.com uh, from people who would like to us to debate and adjudicate on who would win in a fight between two disparate parties and then match those people up against each other to determine one champion. Uh, Merritt, have you been here for one of these before? No, no. This is my first time at the Violence Island. It's easy. <laughs> it's very easy. You just have to decide who would win in a fight between two guys. At the, the violence fight. I'm not going to lie. Most of the time, most of the time, it's easier than taking a dump. So... <laughs> Okay. Most of the time. We'll see how it goes this time. Our first match is Joel from The Last of Us okay. versus Booker DeWitt from Bioshock Infinite. Oh, both voiced by uh, Troy Baker. 
I almost said Troy McClure, and, or, and then I almost said Troy Aikman. <laughs> What's with all the Troys with K's in their last names? A lot names, of Troys. Huh? A lot of Troys with K sounds in their last names. Interesting, yeah. huh? Yeah, I think Troy Aikman could beat Troy McClure in a fight. Yeah, which Troy? I, would, I think Troy Baker would definitely be bottom of the pile, no <laughs> oh, matter yeah. what. You ever see that guy? <laughs> when it, when uh, when when they're talking about The Last of Us becoming an HBO series, and it's like like 90, 92 dudes with with Kratos avatars or Nathan Drake avatars or Joel from The Last of Us avatars, being like, they better cast Troy Baker as Joel. <laughs> I'm just like, have you guys ever seen this dude? I mean, I'm not exactly some kind of Harley Davidson bench pressing man myself. No, he's like a, but like, but like, he's like a handsome little boy. Yeah, <laughs> he's like a, a very sharp looking little boy. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate to, bu- I hate to do anything so bold as bust out the phrase "face for radio" here, but it's uh, he oh, just. Oh, I just, wouldn't say that. I don't he's, know. He's, he's not he's one of those. Enough. No, that's that's why I wouldn't do anything so okay. bold as that. He's got a a, a self for radio, though. Is what <laughs> oh, I would say. I see. Okay. Which is even even crueler to say. Uh, cha ching. Uh, Marcus Phoenix nice dot wave. He's got a he's got a person for radio. I couldn't possibly speak to that. I haven't played either of these video games. Versus Booker Dewitt. Yeah. From uh, Seinfeld. That's a joke. He's from Bioshock <laughs> Infinite. Um. Well, Booker Dewitt's got uh, magic powers yeah, and Booker uh, Dewitt. And he's got a uh, he's got guns. Yeah. He runs at about thirty miles per hour. Yeah. Isn't Joel just a guy? I didn't play Bioshock Infinite, but yeah. Joel's just a guy. He's resourceful. I've played just about enough The Last of Us to know there are lots of fights Joel uh, probably couldn't win. He's too realistic a character. Yeah, like how re- how resourceful do you have to be to like resource your way out of getting hit by fucking mind lightning or whatever? Yeah, I don't know yeah. what the powers are in Bioshock. I think there's birds. Maybe. Oh, he's got mind lightning. He's got crows. He can make birds yeah, do crows. stuff. That's true. What can he do against crows? So, uh, in case you're just tuning in, Bioshock Infinite and The Last of Us are two 2013 AAA Game of the Year award nominated video games. Uh, one of which got a 10 out of 10 from Polygon, and one of which got a 7 out of 10 from Polygon. And it's not the one you would think <laughs> in either case. Uh, or is it? It depends on what you think about video games, Polygon, or, you know, whatever. Um, both of these games feature a uh, a, a, a alpha male protagonist uh, uh, voice acted by Troy Baker, who must escort a little girl who has a secret, uh, a key to uh, unlocking uh, the future of the world uh, it, through dangerous territory. So let's put it this way. Uh, Booker DeWitt's little girl has uh, deadly powers and also can't be killed uh, because she's just running around the battlefield with explosions happening. It's easily Bioshock guy. Yeah. We're just clowning on it here. He's going to completely... He's not cool, but he wins the fight. No, he's not cool as, at all. Uh, it, but This this isn't a, a coolest island or whatever. No. It's yeah. mm, I mean, Joel's yeah. whole thing is he's not cool. Right. It's not Dick Fight Island. This is Violence Sorry. Island. It's totally That's different. Correct. Forget it, Jake. Our next fight is Siegfried from Soul Calibur versus Roy from Fire Emblem. Oh, yeah, very good. That's fun. Wow, clever. I mean, they're both big sword men, right? Speaking to the history yeah. of living in a college dorm, when uh, I got my Dreamcast and I brought it in and we, we hooked it up in the, the, the lounge on our dorm floor and we played Soul Calibur, uh, Nightmare was the, the dude everyone chose because yeah. they just yeah, pressed... He's- they just pressed the was it the Y button on the Dreamcast, the the vertical slash button three times to do the hoo hoo ha move. Uh, yeah, he's where he, cool as hell too. Also, he slashes downward twice and then up. And I was like the only person on the whole dorm floor who cheated uh, by knowing how to block <laughs> and just completely throttling everyone, just like completely mm, destroying yeah. every single person. Just sidestepping. So I'm guessing Roy from Fire Emblem would know where the block button is. Roy famously is able to counter in the Smash Brothers games. Yeah, I know. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but he's low tier uh, historically. I don't know what he is in like in Smash Ultimate. But What's that? He was pretty low tier because he was basically worse Marth. I only know him as being in a game called Fire Emblem. To be yeah. honest. Oh, I see. I see. Siegfried has like a giant sword made out of five million shards, and I feel Plus like I feel like Siegfried has a significantly more robust move set mm. than Nightmare. 
Well, Are we talking about Nightmare they, or no, Siegfried? No, 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 Siegfried. We're talking about Siegfried. Nightmare's, Nightmare is Siegfried's ultimate form. It's his form when he's corrupted by Soul Edge. Yeah, when he's corrupted by the, yeah. the Soul Edge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, also, Roy only has one form, let alone. He, he doesn't have two. Well, no, yeah, that's right. Well, wait, what about Necrid, though? What about Necrid? What about Roy? Necrid? Necrid's not real. No, he's the greatest character ever designed. <laughs> Todd McFarlane's Necrid. Yeah, I almost said Scott McFarlane. When you don't want to infringe on uh, on on Nemesis, and you get Necrid. Yeah. Siegfried's just a big target. That's all he is. Mm, he's a big. Yeah. He's like he's just a big target. He's a loser character. Roy's got that speed. Well, my vote's for Siegfried anyway. I think he's too low tier. I'm gonna give it to Roy. You're gonna give it to Roy. Right, right, right. Yeah, it is. Roy's the boy. Doom guy versus Master Chief, but they're oh both wearing God. clown costumes and don't have any guns. What? Oh. Okay. Well, then it's about whose melee attack is better, which is doesn't Master Chief have a it's knife? Master, Master Chief has a melee. Master Chief can like flip over a tank. Yeah. 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 It's Master Chief. Well, that's the suit though. That's with the suit. Yeah. 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 But also, Doom guy. Uh, Doom guy can punch. He can. So. He can rip and tear huge guts. But doesn't Master Chief have a knife? Well, let's let's Does put it this way: up? there's no there's no big red blood in Halo. Mm, true. Yeah. So there's more there's big red blood in Doom. And also, here's the thing: if we can get a little contra voiceal, you can see Doom guy's muscles in the box art. That's true. That's you can't true. Yeah. see Master Chief's muscles. He could be a little noodle man under there. He could be goddarn mm-hmm. Earthworm Jim. He probably would have to be really small to, because yeah, he's just a head. The size of Master Chief in in the suit is the size of a buff man, which means that yeah. underneath the suit well, he sure. has to be much smaller. Like mm. he, exactly. Uh, if you watched the RoboCop documentary, they needed to get a slender guy to fit into that big buff suit because mm-hmm. if you got a buff guy. He would just be b- bursting out of the universe. They needed a slender guy with like a wide head. Like a slender man. Right. Of sorts. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So now I'm on board with a uh, Doom guy. Okay. So so Master Chief is Earthworm Jim, but Doom guy yeah. is ripped. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a yeah, sign. So I guess it's Doom guy. Yeah, it's Doom guy because yeah, we've Doom seen guy. we've seen the muscles. The proof is in the pudding, as it were. Our next match is Mario versus Charles Martinet. Mario, Mario. all the way. Mario yeah. can become an elephant. Yeah. Charles Martinet's too coked up, and uh, the <laughs> Mario's voice. No, but that would give him a burst of energy. It's true. That would it would make him incredibly unpredictable. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna tell you what. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get a hundred percent real here about cocaine. Please, let's do it. Every single person I have ever encountered with who was high on cocaine i could have beat them up <laughs> if it had come to that i could have ended their life with my bare hands wow. i could have done it. it 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 doesn't make anyone it's not pcp carl uh it's it's not pcp it's not it's PCP not some doesn't sort of, make you stronger pcp makes you a more it makes you uh more confident it makes you see <laughs> Yeah, well, PCP has caused a certain sort of superhuman adrenalinous rage, a, 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 a adrenalinulous rage in uh, in humans uh, humans nationwide for oh, uh, quite true. some time. Yeah. So I do I do believe you know it, it, at any rate, cocaine is not going to help. Who who amongst us does does not remember playing uh, Super Mario Brothers Advance, Super Mario Brothers Two, or Super Mario Brothers Advance Two? Uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 on their Nintendo Game Boy Advance worst branding Nintendo ever committed Super yeah. Mario who who amongst us does not remember playing that hearing Charles Martinet go oh, wahoo when you like you just press the A button the first time and then just instantly throwing the cartridge into the toilet <laughs> right cuz you know what here's one thing that was awful yeah it, they uh Game Boy Advance cartridges flush yeah, I bet they do. Yeah, you can get That's, it. Down I think there. I think it's I think they're the biggest game cartridge that flushes. Uh, in case you uh, you know, in case the cops are banging. You could at probably the door. flush a Wonder Swan card if you wanted, if you gave it a real good. Depends go. on the toilet. But uh, the, Mar- what I'm saying is Mario's voice is the weakest aspect of Mario, and free of his mm. voice, the man would the man would be quite tough. So I just have to to say that Mario has already defeated Charles Martinet because uh, Charles true. Martinet is no longer voicing Mario and Mario persists. That's so true. That's true, yeah. been- Mario, no, Mario persists and his voice actor is listed alphabetically in a large uh, a large <laughs> list in the credits yeah. of the Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which is wild. 
they 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 refuse to let a person take credit within the game as the voice of Mario. They let him say it on social media though. Yeah. Also, they let him say it. Presuming name. Mario starts full size, he can take at least one hit. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. True. But also Mario can jump uh, even even little Mario can jump like First of all, you come across you a guy his head. who can jump like like six times higher than his own body height. You're gonna die, yeah. Especially if you're a, you're a weird, <laughs> slow, sort of strangely shaped burlap man like uh, butt stomps are in Charles school. Martinet. <laughs> we we have our semifinalists. Our next match is Booker DeWitt versus Roy from Fire Emblem. Oh, I don't care about either of these assholes. Yeah, well, that, that's the, that's the best part of round two is that yeah. it's all t- it's the discussion has happened and it's time to go home. I don't know how this magic crow shooting guy is going to be defeated by pretty much anybody at this point. So, uh, but I think he takes Roy. Basically, you've got a video game character designed by a mental twelve-year-old <laughs> yeah. versus a video game character designed by a mental twelve-year-old who's really cool uh, yeah. is, uh, is a our mental 14 yeah a mental 14 year old who's 12 who's also 12 <laughs> uh, so it's so uh, kind of doing well for, for their age Bioshocksman yeah. wins in my in my estimation yeah, yeah, unfortunately I mean, it sucks yeah, yeah. but Hate mortality it. also no one's happy about it but like yeah I mean he would have beat he would have beat Siegfried as well yeah yeah uh, clown costume doom guy with no guns versus regular old Mario Mario well it's a tough one. Mario can still do that jump. He can still do his butt stomp, even Bowser. if he doesn't have a fire flower. Uh, he's he's got a lot. He's got a I lot. Th- of stuff. I think for for conversations like this, it has to be. Uh, we got to be thinking in terms of Mario sixty four. Mario, I think that's the middle of the road. Yeah, Mario. the full range of motion. I think Doom guy can't jump. Really, Doom guy can't jump. Doom guy doesn't have the verticality. Not a single jump at all. No, no, no guns. Mario has the high ground. So Mario's yeah. gonna stomp that clown into trash. Yeah, he's gonna butt stomp him. I would say he's got the Y axis. The course of action I would take would be the butt stomp. Yeah, so it's Mario. So who wins between Booker and Mario? Well, here's where the magic of the show happens, is you get to concoct a reason for the person who sucks to lose. Exactly. So Mm. uh, have at it, everybody. How's Mario (laughs) going to do this? I don't know. I I feel like he won't because we got we got the magic hands. But Mario would have to. Um, I don't know. I Mario's I don't rem- beaten magic Koopas. He's beaten the Koopa children. Yeah, Mario has also has like the support of all of his friends too. Which I think even if they're not allowed to actually help him, would he just knows they're out there. Fuel him spiritually like a shonen protagonist. You know, mm-hmm. he would be hearing them in his head. Whereas Booker Dewitt gets drowned. Oh, sorry. Uh, spoilers for Bioshock Infinite from ten years. Oh, he ago. dies. It's yeah, fine. he he gets drowned in every reality or something by sixteen different versions of the that girl because he's secretly the guy. Fuck, I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah, he's it, the guy. He wanted to be the guy, and he was. Uh, it's. Uh, I remember joking to myself. I I wonder if he's the guy, and then it's like he is. <laughs> it's like I wonder if he's actually the guy, and it's like he is. Like Dub a Doy, they keep showing you this guy with a huge beard, and it's like, if you just shave that beard, you're the guy whose face you never look at in the game. That's that's him. So Booker Dewitt doesn't have a mustache, is what I'm saying. He has no facial hair where Mario does. Mario has a very powerful mustache. Yeah, all Mario has to do is dive into the water around Violent Island, and I think he's got the advantage. Oh, can Bioshock not? Sw- oh, Bioshock drowns. Right, he drowns. Yeah. Well, I mean, he starts, he begins the game being baptized in the river. But Bioshock also has, like, he can use water. He can manipulate water. Uh, so that's a f- problem within the Bioshock universe. Not too but much. I'm just looking, I'm because I haven't played it, I'm looking at his powers, and he has one called Undertow, which is a mass rain, a ranged mass manipulation power that allows Booker to use a stream of water to pull an enemy closer to him or oh, push man. them away. Brandon's really shaken by Ow. that one time we underestimated <laughs> quiet on this show. That's right. Everybody got mad <laughs> oh, at me. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, I don't care if... if Brandon we... doesn't want, like, one guy to uh, <laughs> mention something. I enjoy when all the Violence Island uh, winners are the worst one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess... Mario's dead. I don't know how Mario beats a magic you, man. You want to kill Mario? It's weird to let Booker DeWitt have all his guns. He doesn't need his guns. He has magic hands. Just his magic hands. Look, he takes a drug. He drinks the lightning. Has anyone here actually played Bioshock Infinite aside from me? No. I played no. Bioshock Finite, but not Infinite. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've, I'm the only one who's played all of it. Let me tell you, uh, the guy's got magic powers, but... They suck. Okay, <laughs> they really, they really, honestly do. Unflinchingly, I would say they suck. 
it but it is guns uh guys got guns it's 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 just like the worst first person shooter that you've ever played but there's tons of guns but he's still got that electric shock and stuff right like he can stun people that stuff all them. sucks all that stuff is nerfed it's trash uh it's hard to use it's unintuitive it's ugly uh but it's there uh but basically you've got guns and the guns are are uh, you know stupid super hyper overpowered so we're gonna say mario wins just because no I, I, no I i'm just he... i'm just i'm just letting you know that this guy's guns are legit is what okay, i'm saying the guns Do, are there. i i think bioshock win yeah, yeah. i mean Booker you know bioshock. It, he Bioshock wins, but is with, the game of the year, yeah. With the yeah. very, very strong uh, asterisk caveat of who cares. <laughs> <laughs> That's the asterisk under this entire yeah. segment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just the segment? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Booker DeWitt joins our tournament of champions for the ultimate end of this season. Congratulations to that guy. The only thing he'll who ever else win. Is, uh, who else is in there? Uh, currently, uh, Sonic with a knife is in there. Oh, whoa. And wow. Silvando from Dragon Quest XI is in there. Sure. Okay. Sonic with a knife. I mean, that's yeah. great original character. Very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just swept it. I mean, yeah, he has a fucking knife. <laughs> what do you do in that scenario? All right. This is the point of the show where if you have anything to recommend to our listeners, be it something that you're personally involved in or something that you just resonate with. I would recommend you uh, you watch the Game Awards uh, from last week just so you can get to the part where, where Honkai Star Rail wins an award and <laughs> Jeff Keighley says, Honkai Star Rail! Honkai? Yeah, he, I, he says Honkai. He says Honkai so many times. <laughs> I lost like huge hamburger handfuls of my mind every time. I was like losing Losing my mind. He, there was almost a pause between honk and I. Honk I. Yeah, it's like it's is it like uh is it Hawkeye from the right, Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe uh had a baby with the goose from Untitled Goose Game? Like I don't understand it. There's I I'm just I mean, scrolling honk down. Hawkeye, Hawkeye, but a goose is like a really good premise. Honk I. Yeah. But it's uh, also he he mispronounces so many Japanese names like like he pronounced uh, Nobuo Uematsu. Does anybody want to guess? Uh, Nobo Nobo Imatsu. Okay, Merritt, what's your guess? Uh, no, no, Emacs. And Brandon, you probably you you must remember because I it mean, was I, so, I watched it, so I don't get. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he said Nobuo Utematsu. <laughs> yeah. He said <laughs> nice. Utematsu. Utematsu. And I was I like completely lost my mind. Not even like close. how daddy's moneyed. Of a god darn Canadian little witch boy, can you be <laughs> before, you know, it stops being a good idea to just take like a five minute, watch a five minute YouTube video to like learn how to pronounce every god darn Japanese word that has ever existed. It, it shouldn't take you more than three minutes to learn how to pronounce literally any Japanese word forever for the rest of your life. It's not hard. And somehow he clutched it every single time. Uh, Man, there was a uh, that uh what what's her name? The 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 artist Ikumi something. Uh she was up there yeah. and she announced her new game, right? Ikumi Nakamura, right? Yeah, wow, okay. You know, I don't, I don't know her full name. Like I don't know. I just know her name is Ikumi, which I I knew a girl named Ikumi, so it, it's like it makes sense um that I remember that. So uh, Unseen Tokyo He's like, he he calls her like Ikumi Nakamura, introduces her, and then she shows a trailer for her new game, right? Which just shows the title on screen. And then, you know, when they come back from the trailer, she's off the stage, okay? And Jeff Keighley's there holding the microphone with two hands because of some traumatic experience once where he, he, he tried to hold it with one hand and dropped it. Like, I don't know what happens. Comes back, he's holding it with two hands, and he goes, everybody, get excited. Oh, that was the first, the world premiere trailer for Kamuri. And the game oh, is called Kemuri. Kemuri, which is the Japanese word for smoke, right? Kemuri. And he says, Kamuri. Like it's K apostrophe and then the last name <laughs> and then Bill Murray's last yeah, name. Old man Kamuri. Yeah. It's like, it's, uh, anyway, if you want to so, have a, if you want to have a stroke, watch the game awards <laughs> is my recommendation. Tim, I was watching a, a great British bake off the professionals and, uh -huh. um, I, I, w oh, I wait, don't wait. know if you'll want to guess, but, uh, there were some people that were using hojicha, which is a roasted green tea. Oh no. In their, in their recipe, can you guess how these British people said hojicha? I don't know. Probably like hajicha. You you'll you will never guess. No, let's hear it. I just said hajicha, so that's all I got. 
um, I'm almost losing it right now. I either lack the linguistic imagination or have too much linguistic imagination to contribute to this. Uh, So let's just, what is it? What was it? Hohicha. Hohicha. Oh, that's, yeah, that's. There oh, because they, they, they thought they thought it was Spanish. They 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 got somewhere in between Spain and England in their pronunciation, and they said Hohicha. Oh wow! And and I had to I had to like rewind to listen to it again because I I, I was losing how they pronounced it because it was <laughs> so far off. Hohicha. Anyway, they said mm-hmm. it multiple times. That was very funny. I have some recommendations. So I guess that's a, that's a good recommendation for everybody to you if if you ever really wanted to you could learn how to pronounce every Japanese word ever in about three minutes. It's a i u e o. There's no accent, no uh, no intonations to worry about. A i u e o. And you just look at a word. A vowel is the end of a syllable, and you'll learn more as you go along. That's there's, awesome. There's... I'm learning Chinese right now, and it's oh yeah. You so, mean Zhongwen? You got some tones in there. Ah, uh, Hanyi, yeah, yeah. Or Zhongwen is yeah. yeah. You know, you know, you know Zhongwen. Zhongwen. Oh, I know him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have this running joke over here where uh, uh, I I speak fluent Chinese, but I have never uh, I have never spoken it in front of my girlfriend, <laughs> whose family are all Chinese, <laughs> and uh, when they meet, they converse, and I understand every word, but I say nothing except sometimes I will respond in English, uh, uh, at, at which no one ever congratulates me. Nobody, no one ever double takes and says, "Wait, you understood that?" Uh, but occasionally I will react. Uh, and I told my girlfriend that I will speak Chinese at the funniest possible moment. And I have a moment in mind, but I can't uh, I can't manifest it without a lot of uh, the things happening. So it's uh, it's it's going to be a difficult maneuver. It's a long game to be sure. Right. But uh, keep us updated. So <laughs> that's why I must pronounce it Zhong Wen. Uh, uh, right. You don't want to give the game the, away. Yeah. 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 Can't uh, can't give away my my crystalline perfect pronunciation so brandon did you have some recommendations <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm gonna start with my my not exactly recommendation and then move on to two actual ones the not exactly recommendation is there is a uh not very good movie called expect no mercy starring billy blanks and uh jalal Mary. and the movie's not very good but on the blu-ray they have a long play of the Expect No Mercy companion video game that was made for Windows 3.1. And I think that's really fun. That's a cool thing that they did. So I, I recommend uh, the idea of that to any other people making uh, fancy Blu-ray editions of obscure uh-huh. movies. If there's a video game tie-in, put it in there. Why not? All right. Next, there is a video you can find on YouTube. Uh, Tim's, Tim's Troy McClure is actually a hint toward this. If you look up 1994 TNT, How the Grinch Stole Christmas oh, with I Phil Hartman, this. there is a really excellent 20-minute thing where Phil Hartman is talking about the making of The Grinch, the, the, the old animated version. And it's just really pleasant <laughs> to hear phil hartman he's, he's doing a live action troy mcclure without jokes he's basically being troy mcclure and doing those kinds of super dry jokes and yeah. it's great so that's a fun little experience you can have uh the last one the hbo max i refuse to remove the hbo animated series max the one to watch for hbo the one to watch what do you think is the word that's being said when the max logo starts up like there's a word in there, isn't there? There's I hate a person all those going, sound. Bruh. I hate all those sound oh, effects they're that they have for all the apps. I hate them all. There's like somebody saying something in there. I want to know what it is. Anyway, there's a show called Scavengers Rain, oh, which yeah. is a sci-fi animated show about a bunch of people on a mysterious planet, and they have to Rube Goldberg all these flora and fauna together to make things happen. And it's just got a lot of ideas in it. It's very vibrant and neat. And uh, I feel like the writing and the acting is kind of stilted and strange, and it's just really weirdly presented. But the whole, the world and all the stuff that happens in it is really neat, and I quite enjoyed it. And I hope they put it on Blu-ray before they uh, jettison it from the universe and and, uh, remove it from all streaming services. Yeah, which they will, which they absolutely will. They absolutely will, because it's it's not gangbusters popular. By the time the human race goes extinct... Max, the one to watch for HBO, will have removed everything (laughs) except maybe like one episode. The first, the pilot episodes of The Sopranos and The Wire will be the only things that remain. It'll have 90 Day Fiance. After you watch Scavengers Reign the Show, probably not before, you can watch the short film that 
it was based on or that was like the progenitor of it which is just called scavengers which is a totally different art style um doesn't have the kind of long form narrative and it's more of a tone piece but it's pretty neat too so you can watch all that do you see the the netflix release of all of its um data or like the hours watched no you were. oh i i saw this but i didn't click on it so they did a huge dump of all of the all of the shows they have currently and how many hours were watched. And so if any, if anything's under 100,000, then it gets rounded up to 100,000, but the rest of it is theoretically not that rounded. And you, you talking about them having the pilot of The Sopranos or whatever uh, reminded me that I, I was trying yeah. to look up some of the movies that came out on Netflix that were fun to see if they matter at all in the hours watched. And Bullet Train uh, was one I looked up. And it had like only 400,000 more views than season nine of Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, that's wild. <laughs> Which I thought was really interesting. And Netflix does seem to use hours watched as one of their favorite metrics for whether they'll keep a show going. So there's really no incentive to ever make a movie for that service, really, because uh, it's all about hours watch. Uh, all right. Merritt, do you have anything you would like to recommend before we go? Yeah. Uh, so I'm a writer at <clears throat> 1900 Hot Dog, the last comedy website, kind of almost the last website at this point. Uh, it's run by uh, Robert Brockway and uh, TV's Sean Baby, who oh, some okay. of your listeners may know. Uh, and yeah, We've never just, made fun of that guy on this show. Yeah, not, not any times. It's a great website. I write about really goofy, mostly just like weird uh, superheroes and things that like no one remembers but me from like the early 90s. Yeah, I've seen some of your stuff on there. It's pretty good. I'm sure people contact you all the time to inform you that they also remember the thing though, right? Actually, no. <laughs> oh, like oh, really? some of them are so deep that like people are just like, what the fuck? Where did you find this? Because a lot of yours is like only in Canada. It's only Canada or it's stuff I'm, I was only aware of because my parents bought like bed sheets with these characters on them at Costco in 1993. Right. And it turned out it was like some guy's like completely insane multi-year effort to get balloon superheroes. Made. I'm looking here and I'm seeing you posted about the comic book COPS cops. Oh yeah. I remember I that or the TV show. Yeah, that one. Was I remember that known. one. Yeah. That one people know about. I know, I know. But you might not know that it had PSAs, which uh, were really stupid. Very funny. Uh, yeah. So that, and then um, obviously the land book, do you want to check that out? And uh, I've been watching a TV show from the late 90s, early 2000s called Made in Canada. I think it was known as The Industry Everywhere Else. And uh, it's Rick Mercer, who is sort of this big Canadian uh, comic and media fixture. And it's just about uh, running a, a TV production company in the 90s and early 2000s. And uh, it's really funny. I don't know where it is streaming outside of Canada. But uh, yeah, check it out. It's a good show. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed this or any episode of Insert Credit, I would like to recommend that you please rate and review our show wherever and however you can. You can also support us on patreon.com slash insert credit to pay our editor to pay me. Not to pay me. Not to pay Tim. Not to pay Tim. If you'd like to sponsor our show with an advertisement or a personal message, you can do that by contacting us at show at insertcredit.com. You can join our community at forums.insertcredit.com or find videos of these episodes on youtube.com slash insert credit show. Uh, why don't you go ahead and wishlist Demon School if you haven't done that already? Yeah. And uh, Frank Cifaldi is right now in the middle of this monumental campaign for uh, the Video Game History Foundation, where he's releasing just one new extremely cool thing a day until Christmas. And uh, if you're not subscribed to that newsletter, you got to get on that right now. This episode is edited by Esper Quinn with original <laughs> music by Kurt Feldman. I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. I'm Eric Kay. Honk I will always love you. Honk I. <laughs> That's very good. God, Honk I Star Rail, Lord. Honk I Star Rail. Honk I Star Rail.